All right, let's get started today. Um, so lots and lots of announcements, just tons of stuff. Uh, the most important one being that Porsche Studio Update, the, the biggest one so far, has already been released. However, a very, very big, scary, evil thing happened in the middle of the patch release. And we usually do these around, um, you know, like, like really, really late at night um, because we assume the Internet's amazing at that time. Uh, so we sent out the patch and there was an internet outage because of some storms nearby in western New York. So just tons and tons of, of just rain nonstop all the way west and, I'm um, sorry, east. So our server is more east. It's like two hours away um, for Spectrum. So um, we ended up having a network outage in the middle of the patch update. The update went through and started distributing to every single user which was horrifying because we thought we caught it till the next morning when we got like tons of emails abu had to respond to all of them and just we followed up with like some sort of damage control with the um with the video and how to uninstall and reinstall i'm so sorry this happened this was just so unpredictable i'm not sure why i blame the patcher that we use i'm not sure why it would have ever continued with the patch if it was incomplete I don't know how it indexes which files are remaining and why it thought that it had completed the update and sent out an incomplete program that didn't even have the launcher or I'm not sure what exactly happened but it was just a horror story. So I think that every single user has had this happen to them and if it has, I hope not. I hope it was just some people before we caught it because we caught it early within the hour. I don't know if every computer updated. I don't know if it was just people who were running. Porsche Studio at the time, but I am so sorry. I can't express my apology enough. I, it, it, it was just a moment of celebration completely eclipsed by this really, really stressful tragedy. Um, and we are always at the mercy of our internet connections at the end of the day, which effing sucks. Uh, but um, if you uninstall following the instructions of the video I posted before this that Abu made for us, thank you, um, you will have it up and running in no time. Uh, the update might take a little bit because it's, but it's just so much more optimized. It really shouldn't tax your computer or your internet that much, uh, to be honest. It's, it's, it's like more than 70% smaller a program and more efficient. 70% I think, I, I think Abu did. Um, and so a lot of stuff has been added. I will follow up very, very soon. I promise you with a trailer on how to use Portrait Studio. I aborted mission on the trailer for the last one because I knew there was going to be an update like this coming up. So that means that there will be a trailer this time, I promise you, and it will be alongside my painting. So it will be a time-lapse painting of something that I painted using Portrait Studio. It'll have a lot of the functions, tutorial, um, and it'll just cover everything. I will post a questionnaire soon on the community for, for any questions you have regarding Portrait Studio that I can answer for the trailer. I'll try to keep it short. It's supposed to be a short trailer, but it's trailer slash tutorial slash time-lapse painting is coming out very very shortly another big announcement is that my book will also come out very soon but as a program it will be a um, an updatable program that will constantly be edited it will not be me sending out different editions that you have to buy and re-download it's a book with updates for life um, I'll keep adding to it and if one day the final form happens for that book I will think about physical publishing um, and having a hard copy published out there um, but I think it's time for me to get on with this. The Porsche Studio update was taking up a lot of our time and effort, and Abu is the one who's going to be programming the book um, for me. Uh, it hasn't been done before, but just like Porsche Studio, it, we, we, we can do it. Porsche Studio hadn't been done before to this extent. It's evolved into this wonderful thing, and I feel like the book um, deserves that kind of attention as well because it'll be everything that I know and have ever taught and learned in my years of practice, public and private, um, that, uh, you know, just immortalized in a book. And I think it's time I did that for myself and for my career and for the students who have been begging for a book and those who are more academically inclined, um, you know, that work off textbooks a lot easier. That will be available for you. It'll be a, a program you can download that will you will be able to export the current version, whatever update is available as a Mobi or PDF or um, EPUB file into your phones so you can read it on your phones. Um, you can read it on your desktop 
you can print it out if you have the ink but I think that's the best way for me to do this right now I am constantly evolving as a teacher and as an artist and I feel like me publishing a book with uh, as a hard copy is a bad idea so me being able to have constant access to the drafts that you guys have and um, just going back and forth it'll also be a wonderful way for me to provide readings for my students um, who are in private uh, studies with me um, just it, it's it's everything that I've ever said but a lot better a lot cleaner less swearing <laughs> I hope and a better demonstration and just another way for me to reach uh, my audience and my students so that's definitely coming up and then finally the end of the month is almost over so if you guys are interested in patreon uh, you can get uh, uh, in on it now. So Patreon, you have a lot of options for joining. One of them, a lot of them are educational, but the, the highest tier. Um, and uh, if you want to sign up for the highest tier and be part of the Discord community and the private monthly streams on Discord, um, you have to sign up now to make it for uh, June. If you sign up uh, in June 2nd or 3rd, you don't meet the registration unless you find another way to complete your subscription. Um, so please remember that if you want to be a part of uh, next month's assignments, next month's rewards, you have to sign up now. Um, but that's always available for students who are looking for a private tutoring alternative that has a bit more of a focus, smaller group. Um, and it's getting bigger, but it's not so big that we can't handle it. Um, if you want to just support the, 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 the channel and everything that we do and keep us going, I am aiming for a thousand patrons. Um, a lot of other channels have managed it. I am still aiming for that. Um, but, uh, but I thank everyone who has been uh, just populating my Patreon since January, which is when I really relaunched it and redid it and renovated it. Thank you guys so much. And that's it. I will be looking at the suggestions for um, the... Uh, oh, the stream is done. I will be looking at the suggestions for the... Um, where are you? Unpinned from community. And then there's discussion. Uh, so the, the suggestions for the next community challenge, there's 21 comments right now. I'm going to repin this back on the community. Please have a look at it. Um, remember that don't re-suggest stuff you've already suggested before. If you feel like it's a great idea, you can go ahead and suggest it. Uh, but the more unique your input, the more I can compile. A lot of the suggestions before were stuff we couldn't really do. Um, like a, a lot of stuff is stuff that not everyone will be able to be involved in. And remember, this is all stuff for your portfolio, so it's not necessarily... Um, universal if you're recommending like the same old rehashed gods of Olympus thing or, or magical creatures all over again. Remember, just try to give suggestions that you feel like would uh, and, I'll, and I'll edit and I'll write up some stuff but I feel like um, you know a studio would love to see in your portfolio. So think like that and I think that's it for announcements. Let's take a look at what Porch Studio can do with some uh, student creations. Okay, my favorite one is the one that Josh did. I love this one. I think it's beautiful. I love the shadows. I love the cat. I think he had it on minimal performance because you can see that little shadow acne. Um, it's not shadow acne. It's just like a, a like pixelation. Um, and uh, <laughs> I think this one is uh, the one that Antares did for us. Thank you, Antares. It's beautiful. <laughs> just wonderful the thing is of Porch studio now is you can bring in more than one model in a scene so this this is really really cool but it's it's um it's opened up a lot of dark avenues in people's imagination oh god the crab girl it's just wonderful just just really really innovative <laughs> and then we've got this one these are both ebos all right so the crab and the and the, and the two and the two <laughs> <laughs> the thing is you can customize everything you can add color to everything so it's just like completely just thrown everything into full control full freaky potential but the Porsche studio the more power it gets the more the more darkness emerges from you guys imagination I just can't wait to see what else you have so and uh, if you have any creations you want to share with me I've been inviting all the users to send me stuff on Facebook um, so if Facebook, um, to find that, you just go to my website and click on the little Facebook icon. Um, where is that? Uh, I don't have it anymore open. Uh, but uh, go to the Facebook and send me a message of your creation if you want me to share it. I'm going to just keep sharing some creations. The crazier, the better. And I, I would just love to see what you guys can make with it because the, the multiple objects in one scene is just phenomenal. Um, so if you haven't seen the difference, um, I will post a before and after how Portrait Studio was with the very, very first prototype um, from when we first officially released it. 
um, back in 2016, early, um, I think, I think, yeah, and, um, and where it is now. So it's evolved immensely. There's all kinds of, of, of options that have been divided into even more options. So if you haven't grabbed your copy, the sale is over. I'm so sorry. I kept the sale on for as long as possible. It is back to regular price, which is the highest it'll ever be. If there's some massive thing, a massive amount of, of, of models that we bring in, for instance, from we can bring in a ton of foliage and environment uh, props. I'm talking about all kinds of varieties in rock structures, grass structures, all of that. That costs thousands of dollars, and I mean thousands of dollars. Um, so if we brought in everything that is on our list for potential stuff, we're hitting like $5,000 of, of, of material. Um, so that includes fabric studies, that includes multiple busts, that includes a ton more stuff. So that's why we have to kind of keep the price the same or it, why it might go up. Again, we've always tried to be as transparent as possible. And my vision when we first um, put this together, my vision was that it'll be the only place an artist has to go to get their referencing. That was the vision I started with um, for when I pitched Portrait Studio. So this is where it's headed. It might go a little bit more expensive. It might build up. I don't want a separate studio. Um, remember how we wanted Form Studio? Well, we married Form Studio into this. We didn't want a separate Form Studio. We wanted it all in one place you can go to. Um, and that's it. Uh, thank you the guy, to everyone who's bought it. I really, really appreciate how very little pirating, almost zero pirating is out there. I've always said that if you cannot afford it, you know you need it, please message me on Facebook and I can give it to you for a very discounted price. Even though the sale is over, I can still offer it to you for a discounted price. If you feel like as much as you want to support us, you just can't afford it for the, for the, for the full price. I don't want to encourage anyone out there to put up a, a pirating program. I mean, I've been there. I've been penniless before, like negative amount in my bank account. And I know what it's like not having anything, but also needing all the resources you can get, which is why I even started this channel. The mission statement was teach everyone everything you know. Uh, but, um, but, but, but to anyone who has that idea floating in their head, hey, maybe I can pull this off as a pirate, pirated program, please don't. Um, if you need it, talk to me. And you just have to talk to me. And uh, we'll figure something out spe specifically for you. And then finally, speaking of uh, giving stuff out, uh, I, I am going to be giving up by the end of the month. I'm so sorry for all the updates. Um, uh, a brush set, a uh, full bundle brush set, or a full bun bundle brush set <laughs> and Fortune Studio um, for good note takers. Um, so I, I really encourage note taking a great deal. To, to post your notes, go to the community and click on the class notes. Um, uh, category make sure you post into that so I'm talking a Portrait Studio copy if you don't have one and a uh, all the brush sets that I have out there okay let's keep this community going all right so let's get started on today's critique lots of stuff from every which way which is my favorite type of class all right I'm just gonna drink some water okay so this piece I was looking at last time I really wanted to look at it more specifically because I feel like there is so much happening. The very, very first problem um, uh, that I see here is, uh, oops, what, 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 what? okay, so the very, very first problem that I see is <clears throat> that you have a lot of ground space. And when we see this much ground space, honestly, what I'm just waiting to see is a couple of chairs, a couple people you know, sitting in the stage, just just looking at, at what's happening. I, 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 when I see this much ground around the character, I just, I just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, because it, there's a whole foreground you've completely not used. I'm just waiting for when the audience gets up for popcorn or to go pee or something like that. It looks like a stage. It's very, very closed off. So what you want to do is use up some of this space over here. Or else just change the framing or else just change the crop. Okay, so you want to have it look a little bit more asymmetrical, maybe a little bit more to the side. Sometimes I would even recommend tilting the canvas so that the scene is a little bit more, a little bit more hectic, a little bit more crazy. And then another really, really big suggestion would be what I suggested last, which is uh, last class, which is uh, tuck the head away a little bit more. You're facing camera you're, you're putting the head so that it's facing the camera perfectly that's very very awkward she's leaning down she's squatting she's lunging she's just 
about to get up from a jump that was probably very, very taxing on her body. So why is she looking so perfectly at the camera? Is it a still image? Was she, you know, asked to pose? No, if you want the audience to feel the energy, you have to provide instability. Nothing can be perfectly framed all the time. Um, so, just over here, showing more nose at the top, showing more forehead to show that her head is bending down. Less space between the eye and the eyebrow. That means that the eyebrow bone is in front of the eye space. Oopsie. Oh, thank you, Willa, for being my fan. <laughs> and then we've got, I'm sorry, the pupils are all over the place. My liquify is also really crazy because F Photoshop and Adobe. I hope they fall into that Kilauea volcano. Okay, and then we have less chin space visible because the head has tucked in. And then because she just landed, she's going to be looking at her destination, where she's going to go next. You're not just going to keep looking at the ground. Not very high energy when we do that. Okay, a little bit more anger to show the force, the pain of landing on her knees. Maybe a little bit of a kind of like a distress on her face. I like how the mouth is still elongated to one side, like she's just kind of like grunted or, oh, ow, and then she just keeps going forward. And then finally the beard shadow because she's tucked her head so low away from that, whatever the universal light is. Okay. Throw in some more shadow. Provide instability. Yes, exactly. <laughs> A, B, U, crab. Oh, <laughs> Abu, yeah. Round of applause for Abu. Um, then we've got, it's just, okay, I kind of made a mess with my lasso, so I'm just going to take care of that. Then we've got the fact that these guys in the distance are not really scaring me. They're not really freaking me out. She has to look like they're gaining up on her. So what I would do is just like make them like, oh, now I'm drawing Batman, but like kind of make them encased around looking at her kind of, they don't really have to run fast to catch up with her. They, 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 they're just toying with her kind of deal. So I would kind of just make them, you know, all circling around their leader, who is the guy at the, at the base, just over here. Throw in some ears. I'm not really. And that looks like a cat. <laughs> Look at how perfect this silhouette of the cat is, you guys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's just random cats. Like, meow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm just throwing this over here just to show how they're taken over, sort of. And then because we did that, we want to kind of just, um, uh, what am I doing over here? Kind of just throw in some of the, a lighter environment. It, you're not going to see much of the chase, and she's not really going to be able to do much running if everything is like pitch black. We don't, we don't film in pitch black. A night scene, we don't film it at night. Period. Write that back to me. Night scenes are not filmed at night. Oh, by the way, I'm really sorry. I'm stuttering a lot. My medicine's all over the place lately, so I have to change the time, so. <clears throat> I I'm stuttering a lot. Just a forewarning. All right, so nighttime scenes are not filmed at night. Okay, and then you have the fact that she's in the foreground. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a very confused, confusing light source situation that you've done here because she has rim light on her hair. She, she shouldn't have that. There's no rim light source anywhere. It's, it's a dark scene. So what you have to do is either light up the grass around her so that we have some sort of stage-ish. Remember, it's not an actual stage. 
stage around her, just the ground space around her for the sake of the illustration. But this is like a flat light. It's not still cinematic. It's not a stage. It's not a theater. Theatrical. As for the pose, it makes no sense. I am just going to completely invert the body because she should be going towards the ground with the knee that is lowest. That would be the knee that is inviting the, the shoulder down so that she doesn't fall. Maybe she's just started to run. It really doesn't make sense to me unless those two are kind of balanced. So I'm just trying to get the arms and keep the legs. So this arm goes in front, kind of to just find somewhere to rest, and that would, oh, oopsie, and that would make this arm disappear, and this arm disappear, okay? So that means we have one arm left, and it feels more high energy when we do it like this. Okay, she feels like she's about to run. It feels like an accurate kind of estimation of how the body would be in, in an almost run. See the difference? Now that one arm is all the way to the side, we should hide it behind the face. Okay, so more unstable scene. I would suggest the arms do more of a this kind of pose. So where is my um Ugh, okay, I get it. Different layer. So more straight and then whatever needs to be here. Then you can show more of the shoulder being lower, shoulder higher, breasts are responding to that. A bigger kind of position for the legs ready to get up for this for the other leg and then this one is completely rested on the knees um, the hair it just came down so it can be a little bit higher more like a cape the way it cape capes drapes whatever and um, and then the whatever distance you have that brings in the uh, the monster so you can bring in some monsters in the foreground kind of just like peeking over and just looking at her all right, so she actually looks like she's almost getting caught. You increase the instability, the fear, the insecurity. Um, the audience doesn't feel safe. And you can tell this guy's their boss because he's the one with the brightest eyes. He's the biggest one. Um, and then now she feels like she's, you know, they're gaining up on her, but she has a fighting chance because she's focused. Uh, so that's what I recommend for this one. You were doing so little, but you were attempting a really, really high energy scene. And it was just a little comical to see how much of the ground space was there. Um, a, a character more in the foreground. I would put her even more in the foreground. I would put her all the way in the foreground. Um, because to see her legs is to kind of just see the whole picture. And you don't want to show the whole picture. Because if it's a scene and she's running and she's in the foreground, we don't see all of her. So I would make it a little bit more like that. Look, she's running away a little bit, a little bit smaller. That way her face is nice and bigger. And as for scale, so these guys can be big and kind of like uh, draping over, but this guy in the distance, he can be pretty small. Like he's kind of told everyone to go get her. So the pose for this guy, I would recommend a pose like, you know, more like a, you know, just like a creepy head tilt, kind of pointing forward. A little bit of light kind of just has that creepy slender man type of position or maybe he is doing like the like the gargoyle pose and his arm is there and he's kind of just like sitting on the rock looking up to see how the chase is going because they really need to catch her okay so he's surveying it he's clearly the boss bring in some more spotlight kind of coming in at an angle on halfway not completely on his head you want to show off the mystery and the appeal, and then this would be what she, what happens in the foreground. So, 
comical stuff was that there was a lot of ground and everyone was the same size. They kind of looked like funny guys. They didn't really look like scary guys to me. You had the opportunity to really mess with their silhouettes, but you didn't. You went for something a little bit um, basic. Um, so stylize the monsters. They're shadows. It's magic. You can go crazy with magic, especially at the silhouette, uh, silhouette, <laughs> silhouette, <laughs> silhouette stage. Um, and then you need to move her for more in the foreground so we see less ground so it doesn't look like a chase scene on a stage where they're going to start running beside the audience and the chairs and stuff like something cheesy like that. Um, so uh, those are my suggestions. Uh, good luck. Then we have the orchid dragon. So the person who painted this says that they wanted something happened to the light source and it kind of looked off because they wanted the wings to seem like they had a see-throughness. The word you're looking for is subsurface scattering, and that is the fact that you have a translucent object which is partially um, see-through uh, with light behind it coming through the way you shine your, put your hand in front of the sun and you can see some pink. Excuse me. <laughs> um, so that would be the light shining through the wings, showing off some of the blood in the wings. So step one would be to get the background to be a proper light source. and this value, the grayscale equivalent is this dark. That is not a light source value. The key to light sources and getting enough light to shine through matter means it has to be this high. So your background value should have been somewhere here. So hopefully the lasso tool will behave. So this looks something like this. And then we have raise that up nice silhouette and then what you did and you said that yours ended up looking like the wings were in the distance and that is right because you applied atmospheric perspective um, the wings aren't see-through all the way are they is bone see-through no only with x-ray or like yeah x-ray so that means that some of the bone is not see-through so it gets the value of i'm not sure how you did the wings here but it gets the value of the um the rest of the body, which is also opaque. Opaque is just stuff that doesn't let light through. Just normal light, not x-ray or anything like that. And I'm just showing the stem of the wing. And then the leaf of the wing, you should be a little bit more careful with that because it's not going to be transparent, translucent all the way. It'll be just wherever the light is most strong. So we have, oops, the light as strongest just around here, maybe wherever the, it is most exposed. So I would make it kind of transparent around here. Shit. <sighs> okay. God, I hate dodge though. And then we have a little bit more over here, wherever the light seems to be coming through. Okay. And I'm just going to raise that background value more. Another big, big problem that you have is the um, oopsie, the colors. Okay, so that, that seems right. So the colors are off because the dragon's purple, but the light environment is green. So it's a swampy, magical, green, evil environment, but it's not affected the character at all which is in, inaccurate. So if he was purple and there was a green over him, there's a lot of yellow and green. So some of the red and the purple would be, some of the purple and the red would be gone so the dragon would end up looking red. And so let's talk about, let's break that down. I don't think I did that right. So purple and yellow don't mix. They hate each other, they cancel each other out. So the yellow in the green would cancel out the purple. When you cancel out purple, one of the factors of purple gets left behind, either the blue or the red. But because there's a green wash, nothing is left behind, so the dragon ends up looking more red. Okay? That's about as complicated as it gets around here. So, dingus, canceled out my thing. So, what we're doing here. I think I did that right. Uh, you, you map it out. You guys can do it. I think I did it right for the most part, at least as much as we need. So did you guys follow up on that? You, you factor it by color wash against primary color for the object, so the object's local value, 
and, and local color, which means just the basic mid-tone, what is the color of the object? And then out of that, you, um, you just count start there. And then what's left behind, you also assess, can that also move a little bit more? So the purple ends up looking a little bit more red. It's still purple, though. Okay, and then we're just gonna throw one big old wash of green over everything just to make sure. And I'm just gonna try to find a nice filter for this where the green gets to stay behind a little bit. Lighten seems nice. And there you go. You got a little bit of purple there. And you don't have to keep it green all around. Wherever there is darkness, you can bring back some of that redness. It looks a lot better. And you have more anatomy for the dragon. You have more anatomy to look at. If the dragon is going to be much darker, so the dragon was lightened a bit, so I can darken this green so that more of the dragon comes through. But the dragon was, um, the dragon seems very, very under underdeveloped. It me, we need to see more, because the way you framed it, it looks like a storybook, and it feels like the writing of, for the storybook is just going to be around here somewhere. You know, it feels like the story is starting. You can still make it a beautiful atmosphere and have some story here. That's pretty cool. But you need some, like, stem work for the dragon's body. Oops, merge visible. So, something like that. Just anything, you know, to show that it's not, all, it's not the same kind of thinness for the wing all the way around. When you do that, things look to look a little bit more, you know, precise and thought out. It's not the same thinness for the stem. You have some areas that are a little bit more. And guess what else you have to do for subsurface scattering? You have to get the exact color out here and throw that on top. Because that's the only way it'll actually look see-through. Because subsurface scattering is saturation and illumination. And if it's thin enough, it'll be the exact color of the object, of the light source. Okay. Um, as for what's happening over here, uh, I would just completely rethink this. I, I, what is happening with the environment to begin with? So let's go into lighten mode again and, and grab that green. Oh, come on, Photoshop, shit. And just throw some of that in there. So I'm going to let some of this gooey green stay there, but I'm going to darken towards the top so we have more of a mist developing on the bottom. And I would erase some of this with like a cloud brush so we have a leftover texture. So let me try that again. Shoes. Okay, so try that again with another brush. Just so we have this nice leftover texture. Looks like steam or heat or goo or dragon vomit. Has anyone ever seen my favorite dragon territory that was ever designed in concept is from Quest for Camelot. Has anyone ever seen that movie? If you have, I will kiss you on the mouth. I haven't met a single person who was a fan of that movie. I grew up with that movie. It's inspired so much of what I do. And that movie made this beautiful gooey green environment for the dragon country. And the dragons, I love the way they were designed and animated. Please watch that if you haven't. It's a little old and cheesy, but it's got some memorable stuff that I really haven't seen in a long time. And you know that latest movie, Epic? Um, it could have borrowed a lot from that movie. A great deal. So, for the foliage, um, so the movie is Quest for Camelot. I'm just going to try to disrupt some of this. And for the background, you have to bring in an environment. You can't just let it be one single value. It's the right value right now, um, but, oh wow, you actually have audience people who actually watched it. The villain song, yeah, the villain was, was just amazing. It was some of the most, like, you know, it's pretty advanced villain for, for children. Okay, so what we want to do is decide on how we're laying this environment in. So it can be something really, really simple, really basic. doesn't have to be all crazy, but you have to follow the light environment and the color. 
So that means we'll have like level one, oops, level one. I'm just laying down some really basic shit. Level two, which is darker. And then, and finally level three which is a little bit darker. Something as simple as that can open up the scene. Obviously this is lame and boring. You want some trees, you can put in some trees, but you have to follow that step backward. And then the sky itself can have a gradient to it as well. It can have the moment where the light came through. So it can have like craziness um, happen a little bit. You can have some white behind the dragon, just like that. Doesn't have to be crazy. And as for this, it just doesn't match because it feels more like a, a, a dark scene, but you said you wanted an environment that promotes this, uh, this kind of silhouette situation. So everything does have to be pretty bright. And you can do that by, you know, making some sort of magical, uh, you can make it an internal cave kind of something or other. It, it, it can be anything that is kind of showing off this misty valley, but also a situation where a lot where, where we would have a lot of subsurface scattering this can be like bioluminescence or a magical waterfall or something like that all working together select so a little bit more here some glare kind of just trying to as much as i can encourage an environment with what i'm working with and this whole mess is doing nothing for the painting you want to make it look cool add some vines add some actual foliage anatomy add some like tree anatomy here no idea what i just drew so you know you have all of that select inverse and then uh I don't know, anything just to show off some trees. Really nice breathing room, like instantly. And then throw your, you know, your whatever texture you will need for the trees after that. Just anything to open up the scene. So we balanced a lot of that purple away. It's actually the perfect temperature, this purple. You can change the green in the environment so it's not such a gooey green. It can be a little bit more of a magical green. So I would, um, any magic means more blue. So look at what happened to the environment when we made that green more blue. And look at how the green of his eyes came out. This is how you don't work with monochromatic. This is how you work with analogous colors. The the, the you know the little pieces and scales on his body can be a like a really really like pinkish red. Just like that. So they can be colors like that, just as long as you stay in the range of this of this whole scene. Um, and this is crazy saturation all the way up. Okay. Well, let me try some dodge. Just like that. Uh, what else? I, I would think about a more interesting silhouette for the wing. I don't know, something to complete this pretty little thingamabob. And then you need, obviously, some beautiful bounce light to create a more, like more volume for the, for essentially an organic shape, which is the cylinder. Okay, careful with soft brush because it's a little mud. So where is my eraser here? So this brush actually is the best because it's the, you, it's, you need a brush that can erase a soft brush. And brushes that erase soft brush have to have some softness to them, but enough sharpness that it's not another soft brush. And then a cast shadow. And then the shadow on this wing would be the shadow of the body. So this wing wouldn't have equal kind of backward like reflection of what's in the background. So, new layer, 
and then just erasing, and that's the cast shadow of the body. And I would just lower that a little bit. And then, of course, we're framing the painting. So be careful with... Actually, I don't even like the shape for the wing. I don't know why I kept it. Um, I'm going to erase here and show you a quick little trick. Um, where are you? I'm going to erase at, this, at the bounce light I added with a textured brush. Do you see that? So this is a really, really great trick. You add the bounce light belt, and then you erase with a textured brush, you end up getting the texture. And all of that in one brush stroke. That's just a scale brush I found. Okie dokie. And if you want to, you can kind of give us that glare that glow, the sun glow, that really, really intense stuff. You can make some of the spaces underneath him kind of super saturated stylistically. So just some like subsurface on the ground beneath him. I would shift this over actually into blues because it looks so much cooler. And then kind of erase away. Yeah, very misty, yeah. And then some of that color is bouncing on the body of the, of the dragon. Okay, and then what do we do? We erase away with a textured brush. Woo! Let me get that texture backward. Alright, so lots and lots of form study stuff coming up, like lots and lots of, you know, opportunities that you could have pulled from form study that you didn't because you didn't do them, or didn't do enough of them. Okay, dragon. <laughs> um, what else can we add? Um, this is how much I'm going to add for now. I feel like we're just kind of overdoing it. I feel like, no, we're not. I don't want to keep going. <laughs> this is why uh, I love this job. Careful not to lose the sharpness of the dragon against the background. Sometimes I just want to take your paintings and just keep painting them. You know, just offline, just keep going and going and painting and painting, because it's a wonderful idea. I just want to keep fleshing out. I'm going to grab the subsurface color and throw it up here where we have some uh, some flesh kind of peeking through. Wherever the, the stem of the neck starts, that's typically where we um, have the most opaque shape. I'm just making sure we have a nice sharp uh, edge here around the skull. So any questions at all? For the green, I, though I like it, it just seems so basic. I'm just going to move it over into uh, blue. It's still going to be green, but it's going to be a nice blue-green. If you're going to go for green-green, you're pretty much talking about ghost or dark magic. But if you want some magic, like beautiful magic, um, then you go for the, uh, the blue-green. Okay? It might just be me, but I feel like there could be more contrast in the image. Well, the, the, we are adding contrast slowly but surely. Uh, I just raised the eyes, the contrast is in the background, but at the end of the day, Kira, it's a silhouette. The person who designed this requested a silhouette. Um, so I'm going to pretend that's what the client requested, so that's what I'm moving toward. Um, for the dragon's wing, I, I really recommend you do something like this instead. So... Okay, so, so that way you can show off the arm of the dragon, show off the more of the body, the stem, and then move into, you know, the, the shape here and then have that over there. So you have a more interesting shape for the dragon, like he's struggling and he's trying to find a good sleeping position. <laughs> okay, and you kind of break that silhouette in the neck. Out here, you don't have to make it this bright. You can make some more, like, thickets of trees and only a little bit of light comes through. You know, that's the light behind him. It doesn't have to be that um, bright behind him, that cut and paste, that clip arty. 
<sighs> it looks so misty. Subsurface gets saturated. Does it not need more yellow of the sun? No, because we've set it up so that it's a mystical valley. As far as I'm, you know, the train of my thinking. So it's not yellow anymore because there is a green sh a veil of color in the fog that has changed the light source environment from yellow to green. But remember, green has yellow in it, so that take that took care of all the yellow we needed. Uh, any other questions? My favorite part is when Academy Award winning Gary Oldman is the villain utters the line, <clears throat> the ogre's butt. <laughs> I like Quest for Camelot, including the larger monsters, but I don't like Devon and Cornwall. Um, the dry, the double, the double headed dragon. Yeah, they were a bit like, I don't know. I, I hate musicals. I hate what musicals do to perfectly innocent Disney or animated features. Um, Blue-eyed white dragon. Kinda looks like a painting, like it was painted with crayons because of the muted values. Yeah. Um, complementary colors added together produce, produce neutral gray, canceling each other's saturation. You can choose which one wins, though, Tom. Um, uh, should I mention brighter colors? <clears throat> if you want to, you can. Doop doop doop. Raise that all the way up. It's kind of cheesy, but it's starting to look like a league splash. And you can doop, 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 all the values down a little bit. Okay, this is a little intense. It's, it's an option. It's an intense option, but it's one of the valid options. I really like where it was before because what's happened is that, um, there we go. Was it, was it hue? Is this levels select canvas? Was this really the saturation when I did? Oh yeah, it is. It showed up. Okay, so before and after. I like the washed out one because then you can bring more stuff in the foreground. It looks more like a Wang Zhang. I don't know what his name is. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. I'm trying my best. Wang Li Zhang, the one who painted that really really famous um, Monkey King versus Vishnu with the elephant head and the multiple arms. Um, you guys know him, I'm sure. He painted all the Cancer and the, and the Sagittarius and the... Okay, so you got those two. I don't recommend this one because it's a little cheesy, but you might like it. It brings out the saturation here. And then we have the before. Okay. So it was. it started off with a light environment mismatch. Your light environment was off. Okay. Things I couldn't count touched here. What? Contrast, anatomy, environment, light, fog, reflections, foreground elements, subsurface scattering, texture, bloom, silhouettes. Thank you, Mr. Brack. You're very, very welcome. Before. After. All right, so it's not much subsurface scattering because it's not, it's a daytime scene that has green fog and mist in it according to what you originally intended. And there isn't so much variety in what a student originally intends. There isn't that much. You know, a student only has so many options they're choosing from. So I'm never going to put the opinion of a student so high up to say that, oh, they must have been meaning for something else or entirely. They must have wanted something else completely. No, they didn't because there's only so many things to want. There's either a silhouette, top-down light, uh, fireplace light or, or bonfire light, uh, candle light. And that's it. There's really not universal. There's a nighttime scene with a moon, but it's like tons of red light versus blue. There's orange versus blue nighttime. I mean, there's only so many times of day that a student could have meant and intended and, and, and like, you know, imagining, uh, was imagining. So, you know, this is the, you know, there's a, this is just the, cl the closest one to what this student was intending between these two. Okay. So flatten image. I like the desaturated one. It's more mature. <clears throat> There's only so many things to want. <laughs> um, so many brushes. Um, there are not that many brushes. Uh, There's just my brushes. This is one brush set, smudging brush set, sketching brush set, blocking brush set, um, skin texture, yeah. Uh, this is just a bunch of stuff I really like, and these are the textured canvas setters that I call canvas setters. Some stippling brushes, that scale brush that from some random pack, and then some of the, the, the blocking brushes that I started off with a long time ago. 
also someone else's. Um, then we have this one. Yes. So this one, the problem with it is that you're standing her like a bored teenager. If we look at the character from the side, we we'll can see that you know we're trying to show it so that she has the hooves, all right, and then she's got the butt. So we start off with the legs, which are the most important feature. All right, this is off from the side. Then we know what a human's body does from the side. The spine turns. So I'm just trying to match this to match her. So the neck is over here. The legs are down there. Okay. And then we have the head, which is projects from the neck. So the neck is here, the head is there, and then the jawline. All right, so maybe it can like lean just a little bit like that for more balance. This is something I always end up doing when I kind of mess up. The lean is always something I fix right away. Okay, so then we have lower part, the lower part of the part of the body in front, the upper part behind. Even if she's trying to stand straight, even if her chest, let's say, is out because she's proud, she would still need a lower body that was in front to make sense of all this. And you can toss the back part behind, but you're going to have to compensate by, by bringing in the lower part of the legs in front. Just anything to make sense of the balance. And then that would still mean that we have to shrink the, lower, the, the upper body. If you want to enlarge the upper body, you can, you know, make a little bit more sense like that and add like a, a bit more torso. But you still need something to balance along this kebab stick right over here. The skewer. It has to be equal all, all, all around. So you have to have equal mass this way and this way for it to make sense. So it looks like everything you drew was chained on each other. And then you got the legs and then the head. It didn't look like any part of the body was in front. If the head was in front of the torso. So this is the back line of the back, and this is the front line of the head. Look at the distance. This would mean that we see way less neck. So considering that we have this sketch, so keep this sketch in mind, this means that the neck is lower. Okay. And with by, oh shit, by using uh, shadows, we can show that so there's less neck so that's why we hid the neck and brought the head closer to the shoulders so we can show that all this is in shadow and then the foreground is more in front but that the legs are more in front and then by using some perspective markers we can show how There's more of the behind kind of raised. And then tucking in the legs further so there's more perspective. And then um, leaning the body right. And then uh, lowering the torso length a little bit so it seems shorter. If she's primal, which she seems like she is, then we would have I'm just trying to get this to work. We have more of like a tilted, curious head sort of. And remember that kind of showing more forehead to show the tilt uh, forward of the head, showing um, like a, a more of the top of the breasts, more of the top of the shoulders to show that forward bend. So let me grab a good skin tone color that has some yellow in it. So we're showing more of the front of everything and everything else points down. Showing more shadow around here. So this is blocking, showing a, a less visible, not forward-facing belly button. 
are all good markers for perspective. To show that she's kind of leaning forward, all cavemanish, but because she's also a creature. So you have to balance her personality and balance her character design, the anatomy of her character design all at once. That's a lot. It's a lot to do. And I don't blame you for kind of just depending on a really basic human standing long. Even that, that was inaccurate even for a human standing up. I would bring your head down even more. I don't know what the hell is with the aim of this Photoshop shit. I'm sorry. Kind of just make her lean more a little bit. Um, and as to do with the whole size, for upper to lower, you can increase the size of the upper. Everything's already been balanced. You can increase that size if you want to. You can make it this big if you want to. It'll still make sense, believe it or not. Something in between is also really great. Just as long as you keep doing this whole primal forward bend where it was before, things were just so boring. There was no real scale comparison. When you increase one aspect, Compared to the other aspects, it starts to look really, really cool. It becomes at the foreground. Not actual foreground, like the four at the, the four the four fourth something of the design. It's at the head of the design, you know what I mean? Um, you need to bring in a universal value. So whatever the light source color is, you need to bring that in. It's starting to look a little pasty and plain. Some of the pale white of the light source would really do wonders for universal kind of color grading how the colors you know what colors really do something like that um, so where you were before sorry for the extended liquify just really long and boring and just like she was human wearing really funny pants and after like that one thing you can do is just tuck this guy behind like she's walking If this was like a, a standing cycle anim 3D animation for your character when you're not doing anything, the character wouldn't be standing straight stretched along a black hole. The character would be just, you know, kind of looking around, kind of just looking at anything that moves, um, for bending forward, ready to you know walk forward, um, crouching, sniffing, you know, it's not just a board standing. Okay, believe it or not, I want to just completely lower the head even more. Just like that. Look, this is what I feel like her personality is doing. Just like that, that head tilt really gives us a lot of personality. Just look at that, holy crap. And then uh, <coughs> where you were before. before after okay so this is what makes a good character design you're doing a lot with just the standing you only have the standing so you have to maximize as much as possible I feel like you thought the face would do a lot of this for you which is just bad thinking the face isn't gonna do anything for a full character design because it's not portrait anymore it's a full-on character. It's, 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 they're standing up. The face is not the focal point in a character design. Write that back to me. The focal point is the gesture, which is a very abstract concept for students. They're so used to thinking that focal point is detail. Focal point is also like intriguing crosshairs or, or weird designs can be a focal point. Um, you can have the prettiest face here, but this weird shit is cool. Let's look at the weird shit is what the audience would think. And she's just standing there all primal, walking forward a little bit. We've created this beautiful crosshair, this depth of the z-axis by pushing her leg further. You can also bring in that really fun to do, kind of lame, overused, but still fun, fake atmospheric perspective on the far leg. Okay. So it's not a portrait anymore. The focal point is the gesture. Only questions on the piece being critiqued. Is there a way I can get your brushes with class notes that I did last week? I don't do requests. If you, um, 
do a request is kind of just not the point. Do good notes. You don't you don't request. You do good notes. That's what happens. All right. It's not so much a handout as it is you do work and you earn the reward that comes with the work. Is the attitude I'm trying to encourage in this community. It's not a request basis. <clears throat> Um, thank you for the for the critique. When doing character design, should the character face forward with a simple gesture? Um, I don't know what you mean. She's facing forward because she has an attitude problem. If you're doing a character that's supposed to be all poised and full of herself, she should have a straight back and tall and poised and, and elegant and symmetrical. If she's primal, um, she should not be symmetrical. She should be a little bit more like this girl. By the way, if she has a slanted, um, I don't recommend a slanted sphere. Really bad design in that part because you're dealing with curve, 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 curve. You just want something straight to relieve all that, right? Something more mechanical, man-made, less curved. So a perfectly straight sphere would be just fine. Okay, and I think that's it. <clears throat> face is not um thank you edge boy so before after and then you can bring all those cool tattoos back also with the with the style of the body um you know uh kratos's body type he's very pale you can try that you can try something like that where the body where the skin type is very pale but everything else is very saturated that way, when you bring in the red, which is exactly what Santa Monica did, because they're awesome, it actually pops out. Okay, that's that's just that's just what they did. It doesn't make sense to have that orange back and you have the red on top, and it doesn't really pop out. So if you're gonna go for that red again, desaturate her skin tone a little bit. She is a humanoid. She's probably all messed up from. I don't know. I don't know what they do in her culture. Um, also try to give the horns a different color. Maybe they, they do have more paint in their culture kind of deal. So maybe give the horns a red color. Look at like what, what like Indian culture does to the horns of cows. They really celebrate them. They give them all kinds of colors. So design wise, I recommend something like that. Maybe a color that happens naturally. Um, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe they glow. I have no idea. Okay. Um, the before was the chill stoner sister. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, okay, so that's it for today. Lots of stuff we covered. I think I did cover everything. Um, so fix your gestures, fix your environment, and um, show the instability of the chase scene. Give us more of a good attitude for these characters in the distance. Don't uh, just make everyone the same size. Mess around with scale. Mess around with suspense. The, 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 the tilt of the land behind her. The environment. Um, like a Dutch angle type deal. And um, and that's that's it. Alright. Uh, so some final little announcements to join uh, the community. You just have to go to istabrat.com and click on the little Google Plus icon to join. Um, uh, I do have a discussion pinned at the top here for the next community challenge. Um, I know a lot of you are itching to get one, but uh, it won't be for a while because I've just been so busy. And by busy, I mean like I'm working every single day. I'm painting constantly, day in, day out. So, you know, it's the weekends just tend to be my little getaway. I, I, I need a vacation again already. Um, so when I make the next challenge, I want it to be, you know, something crazy that we're all suspensely waiting for. <laughs> Um, and uh, so please get in on that discussion. Tell me what you want to see for the next challenge. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll combine some themes that I like and give you guys something interesting. This time with a definite resource pack, with real limits, uh, something that really, really thought out. So don't pressure me. <laughs> and then Portrait Studio is no longer on sale, but the update is out. If you are having issues with the installation, you're getting that horrible error, just go to my YouTube channel and watch the second latest video, latest right now, um, second latest when I'm done this stream. Come on. You can do it. Oh, okay. That makes zero sense. It's, it's called, 
Where are you? It's it's a it's the latest one. It's, it has fix written all over the thumbnail. And uh, for Patreon, for anyone who wants to support me and what I do, who's looking for an equivalent for private tutoring, an educational kind of uh, subscription, um, the uh, initiate. Uh, the, the, the apprentice tiers have the most educational material. If you're looking to just support, I would really appreciate it if we hit a thousand somehow. Um, and that's it. Thank you, everyone. I will see you guys on Thursday, hopefully with some more um, updates for Porch Studio between now and then. If you have any suggestions or bugs, Abu did a stream, like an eight-hour stream yesterday for bug reports. It was like a bug hunt kind of panel, so suggestions are welcome for any you know any kind of um, controls that you're looking for in Portrait Studio? We ha we don't really do beta testing, so this is this is where you guys come in. If you are using it, if you are a user, you're a potential user, um, make sure that you are you know speaking with us. Stay in communication through Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is you want to see. Let me know. It'll get straight to me and to Abu. We're not that big that you can't reach me directly. And then finally, the Mac release. Yes, there will be a Mac release. We are working on it right now. The problem is that you cannot export to the Mac store without having a Mac. And that's where the problems are because there are no functional Macs out there that are like 2,000 or less. And I don't, I don't really want Apple to have my money, but, but that's what has to happen. So we're just looking to see where this all... Uh, it, we're just looking to see something, something just... We're looking for a miracle. So, uh, so we'll see about that. Um, that's like the only obstacle, I think, other than the DirectX issue, which is some of the Portrait Studio graphics don't transfer equally into Mac. So some features which are amazing, including enhanced lighting, which is the, the, the jewel, uh, the crown jewel of Portrait Studio, is, is not going to be available for Mac users until we find an equivalent. Um, which is something that we have to do with unity and all that. So thank you everyone for watching today. I will see you guys on Thursday. Um, bye